Hi, this is Corin, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week, I'd love to talk about Christmas shopping tips, um, two very near and dear uh, subjects in my heart, uh, Christmas and shopping. Put them together, and I'm a happy girl. And uh, I actually Christmas shop all year long, or at least come up with ideas. I mean, once January, February hits, I am already looking through catalogs, coming up with ideas for all my loved ones. And uh, um, in the past, I used to shop all year long. I would uh, uh, see something in a catalog, or maybe I'd try to wait to get a few things in a catalog, and then I would buy it to make the shipping worthwhile. But this year, I don't know, for some reason it hit me, I was wasting a lot of money on just shipping. And I didn't want to do that anymore. In fact, you want to see what a good catalog shopper I am? This bunch right here, this nice little pile, just from this week, okay? I get them all year long, but in the next few weeks, we're going to be inundated. And uh, needless to say, I still would go through them and get ideas, but I did not catalog shop this year. What I did instead was I went to Amazon.com. I had never really shopped much at Amazon.com. In fact, other than buying a gift card or a book or here or there, or a Kindle gift card, I really never shopped on Amazon. But I found that Amazon is so cool because it's like one-stop shopping. You just put whatever you're looking for in the search engine and they come up with ideas. I mean, I, I uh, have a tradition of getting one of my dear friends a funny t-shirt every Christmas and uh, I would try to find them in catalogs. Well, Amazon.com has a lot of the same t-shirts and different ones and you may not find exactly the item that you want, but you'll find something comparable and uh, that's what I did. I went to Amazon.com started Googling items that I'd seen in catalogs, and I put them on my wish list, which meant it was stored, but I didn't have to purchase them yet. And then uh, about a month, uh, probably a couple months ago, I decided to see what was in that wish list. I added some more things. I went to go buy the items, and they offered me Amazon Prime, which um, you, you pay an annual fee for that, and I think it's $100, but I haven't paid anything yet. Because what I did, and actually this was a little less than a month ago, they offered me Amazon Prime for a one-month free trial. So what I did is I took that, and what it does is it gives you free two-day shipping. So even if you buy one little item or a bunch of stuff, it's free two-day shipping. And if you decide to get longer shipping, they credit your account. So you get like dollars. So if you say, okay, I really don't need it yet. It's not, it's a Christmas gift. You actually get a credit to your account, which is taken off the purchase of your items. So I thought, what the heck? I'll sign up for a month free and just buy everything during that time. And in, in the meantime, I pay no shipping and I get everything I want. So I bought, and I did, I was going to buy some Amazon.com or Amazon gift cards as gifts. I also bought some other items and, um, the key thing is you need to look when you're looking at items, make sure it has the little Amazon Prime check mark because not all items are eligible for the Amazon Prime um, benefits. So you have to make sure there's that check box, but I didn't have any issues finding what I wanted for everybody with that Amazon Prime check box. So I thought that was a cool thing because here I got free shipping. I I can't even imagine how much money I saved on shipping doing that this year. So Amazon.com, one shop, ship, one shop, ship, shopping. Well, I better watch what I say or a bad word is going to come out of my mouth. Anyway, okay, that's number one. Number two, uh, books. I think books, whether someone is a Kindle reader or if they um, love hardback books like I still do, I like a real book in my hands, um, a book is never a bad idea. But I thought I'd give you some ideas of some books. Um, if you love mysteries or the, the person you're buying for loves mysteries or whodunit or thrillers, um, this book was actually written by one of my dear friends, and it's called Unintended Consequences by Sid Brumbach. And I will put all the information below so you don't have to be taking notes as usual, but this was a really great book. I love thrillers and um, uh, mystery novels and things, and that was such a cool book. Uh, the other one I just finished reading was Gone Girl. I know it's a big movie right now. Anyway, 
Gone Girl is an awesome book. I'm sure everyone knows the movie's out now, or maybe you don't, but it's starring Ben Affleck. And it was kind of cool to read the book and picture him in the leading role. So anyway, uh, another really good thriller, mystery um, uh, book. <laughs> if uh, you have someone who enjoys books that are, you know, that are uh, more about business and success and things like that, I'd like to recommend what I learned from Sam Walton, How to Compete and Thrive in a Walmart World, written by Michael Bergdahl, who happens to be my cousin. Um, he actually worked closely with Sam Walton for many years and was given Sam's blessing to write this book. He's written other books about Walmart as well as other inspirational books. So um, if you look up this book, which I'll put below, like I said, um, he has a really interesting bunch of books. He goes around the world talking about uh, Walmart to people all over the world because it's such a great retail model, obviously. Thirdly, um, if you're an animal lover like me and you know you, uh, you know I am, uh, I am reading this book right now, The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein. Look at that cute little golden retriever on the cover there. Anyway, wonderful, wonderful book. It's actually about a family um, written through the eyes of the dog of the family. Um, whose name is Enzo. So whether you're a dog lover or not, I think you'd enjoy it, but dog lovers will love it. And it's just a wonderful book. And uh, I haven't finished it yet, about two-thirds of the way through. It's funny, it's sad, it's um, sweet, um, and it's just a great read. So books, I mean, obviously I like hardback books. I love to read a good book. A lot of people are into reading books on their tablets or Kindle, so you can obviously get a gift card for that for them. But um, books are always a great choice. Um, another great uh, Christmas gift idea is a donation to your loved one's favorite charity. In our family, it happens to be the Salvation Army. Uh, when my sister passed away a few years ago, um, my parents asked that people donate in her memory to the Salvation Army. So continue with that. Um, every Christmas, I write a check to the Salvation Army in the memory of my sister Beth and um, do that uh, as a family gift. So donations, obviously there's a lot of wonderful organizations out there that could use a donation during this time, and um, so that's a great gift idea too. Gift cards, never a bad idea. I mean, you can get them for restaurants, any kind of store, like I mentioned, books. Uh, you can get gift cards, you know, on websites. I mean, a gift card, I think it's a great idea because you can't go wrong. Uh, just, you know what your loved one likes and get them a gift card and they can buy what they want. So uh, they don't, there's no returning and, and all that stuff. So anyway, um, those are a few of the ideas. Uh, check my notes here. And then for a gift for the animal lover who has everything, who has a relative that wants a, that money's no object. <laughs> this is the Curlew Hills Pet Cemetery. These are all little puppies and cats, and this is the gazebo, all of their little burial spots. A few years ago, oh, look at this cute one. It's got a little picture of the guy. I'm sorry, I gotta show that. That is so cute. Oh, my sweet little pumpkin. Anyway, a few years ago when I thought I was gonna be alone forever, uh, about six months before I met Rob, I bought this bench right by the gazebo. And it's a niche bench, and it was for, supposed to be for Toby, Henry, Barney, and Oliver, who have passed before, and me. Well, Rob says he's not going to uh, join us in this, so I need to sell it. And uh, I'll show you one, what one looks like. Here's an actual family. I won't show names, but they have all the members of the family on it. Boy, it's not showing up very well. But basically, it's people buried with their pets, and you can do that here at Curlew Hills. If you're interested, just contact me. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.